So in 1995, I think, I was invited to the Rotterdam Film Festival to show a film I'd made called I Don't Hate Las Vegas Anymore. And in the film, I take ecstasy, and I try to get my father and brother to take it with me. And that's kind of what the film's about. And the guy I got the ecstasy from originally was this guy who made it. And so he came to the screening. And before the screening of the film, he said, I have some ecstasy. Would you like one before the screening? And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, Is this a good idea? I don't know. Uh, Sure, why not? So I took the ecstasy. And it was like hitting (laughs) as the film was ending. And I did a Q&A on ecstasy. And it was kind of great because it felt just like the movie felt. And then there was a panel I was supposed to be on right after that. And, you know, my Q&A had gone over really well. And I go on this panel and there's these different filmmakers besides me. And people are asking them questions. There's a moderator. And I was on ecstasy. And I'd recently read Tarkovsky's book, Sculpting in Time. And in it, he says that a real filmmaker should feel like the film they're making is the most important film ever. And if you don't feel that way about the film you're making, you shouldn't make it. And I remember saying to the other panelists, I feel that way about my film. Do you feel that way about your film? And I wasn't trying to attack them or anything, but they all took it like an attack. And they were kind of like, uh, well, I don't know if it's the most important film ever. Uh, uh. And, you know, on ecstasy, you're very talkative, at least I am. And I just was kind of like talking and sort of taking up all the space. And this woman in the audience says, I don't know why, but I'm really annoyed with that guy the guy who's talking so much. And I'm like, me? She's like, yes, I don't know why. I'm just really annoyed with you. And I said, well, maybe it's because I'm on ecstasy. And then there was like a gasp in the audience. And I could tell the whole audience just turned against me. And I don't know why, but they did. Like, they were like, oh. I don't know if they felt like it wasn't respectful or something, but they turned against me and the panelists were already kind of against me. And it just became dark. And I could feel it. And the next day, when I was no longer on ecstasy, I you know, saw the other filmmakers on the panel and I, and I apologized to them. I said, I'm really sorry if I was offensive. I didn't mean to be. I was just on ecstasy. And they wouldn't talk to me. Like, they wouldn't talk to me. And I was like, I felt really bad. I mean, I was like, I'm sorry. I, I felt that I fuck up. I guess I fucked up. I'm sorry. And then the next film festival I went to was, right after that, was Gadeborg. And there was one of the filmmakers on the panel was there. This guy named John Moritsugu. And... Just me and him were the only two filmmakers from the Rotterdam Film Festival who were also there. And he was having breakfast with his girlfriend. And I went over to them and said, hi, uh, you know, can I join you? And, you know, his girlfriend was still mad about what happened at Rotterdam. I think she felt like I made her boyfriend look bad. But, you know, I was like, I'm really sorry. I, I, I was on ecstasy. I, I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I didn't want to offend. And she said, just please leave us alone and just go away. And, you know, this was like a filmmaker who was kind of like really like edgy and kind of like anti-establishment kind of guy. And I just thought, wow, these people think they're so like radical and like open, but they're really just so closed and shut off. And, you know, that guy lived in San Francisco where I lived also, and I would see him around town and at events, and he would never speak to me. She would never speak to me. And no matter how many years went by and how much I tried to sort of be friendly, like no forgiveness ever. And like, of all the things I've done in my life, like, that's the one that I'm not forgiven for? 